Catherine, Catherine, or Rin? That is the question. Catherine Full Body is an expanded take on the original Catherine that came out in 2011 by adding in a new Catherine called Rin and putting them into the mix. This is Atlas's first game released by Studio Zero, founded by Katsuro Hashino, and consists of Persona Team's main staff, with him mainly being in the director and or producer seat. So while the studio might be considered new, all of the main staff members are people Persona fans may know very well. As mentioned before, Full Body is an expanded re-release. You still play as Vincent Brooks, a 32-year-old who just got a new job and his girlfriend, Catherine of 5 years, just started dropping not-so-subtle hints that she wants to get married. After getting drunk at the bar, a beautiful blonde bombshell starts talking to him, and they hit it off really well. One thing leads to another, and the next thing you know is that you have a one-night stand with this woman, whose name just so happens to be Catherine as well! What a small world we live in. But wait, it just gets even worse. Or better by your perspective. Just before this happened, you helped someone named Rin escape their stalker. In doing so, Rin got amnesia. And as luck would have it, Rin lives right next door to you too! The game takes place over the course of about a week and a half, in which you'll have a hellish time juggling your relationships between Catherine, your smart and ambitious girlfriend, Catherine, your fun and exciting new girlfriend, and Rin, your neighbor, and the pianist at the local bar. But what makes Vincent's week a real living hell is also the nightmares he's been having. You see, for some strange reason, young men have been dying from completely unknown causes in their sleep. It turns out, these people are being forced to climb a tower, and if you fail in your dream, you die in real life. Unfortunately, even if you do survive the night, you don't remember what was happening during it. All you remember is being chased and it feeling like hell. So overall, Kasrin is a puzzle game and, by its own admission, a romantic horror. When you're awake, you have to deal with managing your relationships, and in your sleep, you have to face your worst nightmares. When it comes to managing said relationships, things are pretty simple. You and your friends all hang out at a bar named Stray Sheep, and that's where you'll be controlling Vincent while he's awake. Other than your friends, there's the staff being Rin, Erica, and Boss, as well as some other patrons. It would be best to speak with these other patrons as they're having troubles in their own lives too, and sometimes all someone needs is a good ear. As you talk to these people, time will pass. You can expect a few texts from Catherine or Catherine, and sometimes even Rin as well. How you reply to these messages will move the barometer from left to right, the blue side representing Catherine and the red side representing Catherine. Rin is, uh, a special case, and I'll talk about that in just a bit. Other than talking to people in the bar, there is a game called Super Rapunzel. It, overall, is the story of Rapunzel with you playing as the knight coming to save her. This play is exactly just like Vincent's Nightmare, and actually has its own story to it. Now let's talk about these nightmares. As mentioned previously, you'll be climbing a wall of blocks. You'll be pulling and pushing blocks in a way that makes it possible for you to climb them. In full bodies, there are two different play styles. Aside from choosing a difficulty level, there is the normal mode and remix mode. In normal mode, all block sizes are the same. However, in remix mode, block sizes vary in shape as a way to keep you on your toes. Of course, if you find yourself in trouble, you're more than welcome just to play the game in safety mode. On that difficulty, you can let the puzzle bits autoplay itself and you'll be okay. In between levels, you'll be talking to sheep-looking creatures who look and sound very familiar to you. Other than that, you'll also be asked a question that'll make you choose between Catherine and Catherine. Every once in a while, you'll also be asked a question about Rin, and if you answer correctly, your gauge will be affected in a unique way. The game has 13 different endings. Both Catherine and Catherine each have their own new ending, with Rin getting three endings of her own, with all of them being wildly different from each other, so the game certainly has a ton of replayability from just the story alone. Other bonus content includes the Tower of Babel, which includes extremely hard stages. You can do it on your own or with a friend. There's also a Colosseum, which you can play the game's offline multiplayer mode in. Finally, there's an online arena, which in the game's online multiplayer mode can be found. There are both ranked and casual matches available. There are friendly matches in which you can climb the Babel online with a friend or have a casual match. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to get a match in the online mode, so I'm unable to make a determination if the netcode is good or not. Catherine Full Body looks absolutely excellent. 
Sure, it looks exactly like its PS3 counterpart, but sometimes all you need is a little bit of a resolution boost for it to work. The music is great as well. For full body, Shoji Maguro didn't do this by himself. The added tracks in this game were produced by Takeshi Kuromochi and composed by Masanori Akita. While some tracks are just arranged versions from the original game, all of the tracks present are, like I said, great. They certainly did give off a slightly different feel. The difference for the theme for the bar, Spratch Brooks, is sort of subtle but goes a long way. In the original cast written, the song was carried by a piano, making it sound a bit more somber in tone. In Full Body, as the name of the song suggests, it's a smooth jazz version. Although there is nothing wrong with that, it doesn't quite hit the same feeling the original one had. Although, on its own, I'd say the new track is superior. In the Enzo, it just comes down to preference. The only real negative I have about this game, honestly, are the anime cutscenes. In comparison to just how well directed the game's in-game cutscenes are, these just kind of fall flat. They just don't have the same level of detail the other ones do, such as those quick cuts to a close-up of a character's face for a reaction shot. The lighting and the shading are just completely flat. It's pretty disappointing, really. Now, don't get me wrong, I know just how hard it would be to animate something. However, that doesn't mean it can't be done. And with how well the in-game scenes look and play out, these bog down the rest of the experience a bit. Overall, Catherine Full Body is just an excellent experience and one of the best ones this year. Whether you want to enjoy the story or play the over 500 climbing puzzles this game has to offer to you, the customization is there to tailor to your needs. Outside of the anime cutscenes, I'd almost say this game is perfect. It just ticks off all the right boxes I'm looking for in a game like this. And that does it for our full body review of Casrin Full Body. If you have any comments or questions about the review or the game, by all means leave them down in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you guys on this. Also, let me know if you guys are planning to pick up Casrin Full Body yourselves. And if you're new to my channel, finding me out for the first time through this review, hey, be sure to subscribe for future reviews, commentaries, let's plays, and more. And finally, let's thank all my patrons on Patreon for making today's review possible. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching.